this is a talk explicitly just about the various script templates in Bitcoin used today. Yeah. Um, as John and I think Akio has mentioned, um, addresses do not exist on the blockchain, but scripts do. So that's just one point that's already been mentioned a few times. Um, and you've already seen these templates. Just going to go through it one more time, with a few more facts um, and ideas. Pay to pub key. Um, it was actually the first script template type. It had no address format at all. Um, it does not exist. Um, and it's not a special script. Like, uh, it's not evaluated in a special way. It's just a template, the obvious template Stoshi picked. Nodes would connect each other over IP address with no authentication. And you'd get, you'd get this script directly from the payee, and then you'd pay to that person. Obviously insecure. And the only vestiges of it in the Bitcoin core code base is when you do, when you call generate in reg test, um, it puts the output directly in one of these, um, not addresses, but scripts. Um, and as noted before, we have this work. I need to access this. Is it reflective? It's a screen. It doesn't work. OK. Awesome. All right. Never mind. Um, you have 33 or 65 byte pub keys and check sig and the signature, which is uh, DR encoded. Um, pay to pub key hash is actually the first address type. And on mainnet, it starts with one. Base 58 encoding. Um, again, this is not special. Uh, it's just a template that was picked. Um, it also introduces the idea of uh, using the hash of the pub key to kind of weigh the costs at spending time. So it increases script sig size. Um, and here you have, so you have the script sig with the signature pub key, which are pushed onto the stack. And then the pub key is then, which I could point, it's op duped, the pub key is duplicated, then it's ripmd hashed, and then it's checked against the 20 byte pub key hash, uh, which pushed on to equal verify, and then that goes away, and then you do a check sig. Pay to script hash, um, it's the second address type that was uh, standardized, starting with a three on mainnet. Um, and the insight here is that the receiver is in charge of the spending policy, and so if you decide you want to um, have a very large complicated script, like an 11 to 15 multi-sig or something like that, you should probably pay for it, not the sender. Um, previously, with a bare multi-sig, as John uh, mentioned, um, previously, with a bare multi-sig, the sender would pay for all this upfront cost, as well as on the blockchain as well. The uh, UTXO size would be much larger. Um, and there's a typo here. Uh, it supports arbitrary scripts within this, um, up to a 520 byte push limit. Each element being pushed onto the stack is allowed to be 520 bytes. And due to the way this is designed, the script in blue, which I can point out here, uh, the script in blue is it's one script serialized. And it, if it goes larger than 520 bytes, it's an invalid push. Try to push it onto the stack, it'll be invalid. So you're limited to um, an N of, M, N of 15 multi-sig script, which is the common uh, limitation that people see. And this is in um, specifically in non-segwit, by the way. So this is just uh, legacy P2SH. Uh, it runs in two stages, the kind of the normal script execution, then recursively run again. So um, you have the script sig, zero, the dummy, uh, the dummy input signature for, the, for this one of two multi-sig, uh, since John's already gone over the template, the one you need one, uh, one signature for these two pub keys. Um, then it pushes the entire CLI script on the stack, which is a non-zero value, so it's evaluated to uh, true. It ends, and then it's recursively evaluated as the, the new script pub key is now, or the thing be eval being evaluated on the stack is the script itself. Let's check multi-sig instead. 
um, then that continues to evaluate as a multi-sig instead. Pay to witness pubkey hash is the templated, so this is consensus templated um, way of paying to a single pubkey. Um, has a batch 32 address, starts with BC1. Um, it's longer, longer than base 58, but more robust to errors, and you can even do error correction potentially, though it's not recommended for addresses specifically. Um, and during script evaluation, so it's very simple here. You have the signature, the pub key in the witness, the script sig's empty, and the script pub key is zero on the 20 byte key hash. So what's, what happens here is that um, the zero 20 byte key hash is evaluated, and then the segwit um, evaluation uh, happens where it takes that 20 byte key hash and implicitly turns it into a pay to pub key hash script and then is run again. So it actually goes through the op dupe op hash 160 steps. Um, so it's the, the, what's called script code is identical. Um, and there's a couple of script changes there, but um, mostly sig hash changes, things like that. Uh, last, we have pay to witness script hash, um, which, so for this example, I do another one of two, one of two check multi-sig. So the script sig is empty again. Um, the script pub key is zero, uh, is zero followed by a 32 byte um, push. Um, it's also a replacement for P2SH. However, we're hashing the script, but doing it inside a stronger um, hash. P2SH only has 80 bytes, uh, or sorry, 80 bits of security, um, which is deemed insecure in the nearest future. Um, Bitcoin network does many more hashes frequently, like daily or something like that. Um, so it's deemed insecure. Um, and what happens here is the same, same way as before. Zero signatures pushed, and then the serialized, the last element, which is the serialized script, is then evaluated as the um, the script pub key, so to speak, within the actual uh, SegWit evaluation. Um, and I also don't mention the P2SH wrapped versions, which are more complicated, where for legacy reasons, you the sender might not know how to send directly to a batch 32 address, so you wrap your Pay to, pub key, pub, pay to witness pub key hash or pay to witness script hash inside a P2SH. And so it's a kind of a nested loop, another nested loop of evaluation, which is a little bit messy, but allows for backwards compatibility. And um, this is all detailed. You can take a deeper look at this. Um, in, the, in the BIP 141 spec, it has examples and details, test factors and just some um, things you've already seen today, like BTC Deb by Kali and the BIP um, dot specs. And that's all I have. Thanks.